So this is the Zoom 65 V3 by Mellatrix. The V3 designation kind of tells you that there were two other versions before this one, right? Which is true. So what makes the V3 so special? Well, for starters, this is a version that literally tries to be everything and do everything all at once. Is that a good thing? Well, I guess we will find out. Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is Scott K. This video has no intro because it'll be way too long. Why? Because what I have right here is probably the most customizable keyboard that has ever crossed my desk, ever. The Zoom 65 V3. Customization, like what? Case type? Four different ones. Colors? Well, there are 16 different one of them. Plates, six different plates. Weights, 17 different weights. Badges, nine. PCB, two. Well, there's that. Not only that, this thing also has six different modules and seven different mounting methods. Uh, essentially, you could create 4,935,168 different combinations of this keyboard. Do you need that many choices? The answer is no. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to build this thing out in almost 5 million different ways. I would honestly rather use an Apple Magic Keyboard for the rest of my life versus trying to do that. But what we will do is give you a glimpse of what this thing is all about and how you can custom tailor your specific typing experience with the seven different mounting options that are provided. Let's get over some of the basics then quickly out of the way, shall we? While there are six different plate options, I have two of them, both soft PC and palm. For today's demonstrations, I will just stick with just the palm plate, right? Even for the soft plates, Mellatrix still decided to put flex cuts into them for like, more flex. And yes, I have the thin 1.2 millimeter PCB with additional flex cuts for like max flex. However, you can opt for the standard 1.6 millimeter with no cuts for better sound. And yes, it's a standard practice now to see like so much foam, but you have the usual suspects here, right? Like the case foam to the plate foam to, wait, in this case, no PE foam, but actually thin poron foam for the switches. So this kind of foam sheets doesn't really produce such a marbly effect as PE, but I will show you the difference later when you like decide to use all this foam or you don't. Now let's move on to the case. Overall, it feels like Mellatrix carries over some of the familiar look and feel of the Zoom 65 series from like V1 all the way up to this V3. It has a wedged shape with like a big rear end and more svelte front chin. Now the version I have has the extra inner chamfers, which is optional, which means it has like a shiny little sliver running around the inside perimeter. A nice touch in my opinion. Overall, familiar and handsome case design, right? Now, what is this? I swear, I feel like I've just seen this before. The ball and catch quick release mechanism for the case. It's like all of a sudden everywhere now, which it's a good thing, honestly. Wait, there's more. The Zoom 65 V3 also uses the magnetic connectors, but with a dongle. Kind of like what we have seen recently with the uh, Chilkey's ND75 that I just took a look at. Looking at the inside of this case, you can see the inner cover that is like hiding the two batteries below. If it has batteries, does it mean it has wireless? Sure does. It can support both the 2.4 gigahertz wireless as well as Bluetooth also. One thing I found that was pretty interesting was that the lower case is actually not a single piece. It has a lower layer and like a middle layer. It's actually because of the lower layer, they call it the back plate. I don't know why they call it that, but it's customizable. Underneath everything, you can see that the center of the case has like a slot for the badge, right? External weight is what they call it, which is magnetic, like many things on this board, honestly. Okay, so this is where things get like the dizzying array of customization. It gets deeper. The mounting styles. As you can see here, if you purchase the Zoom 65 V3, you get all the mounting hardware included, yes all seven of them. So what are they? Well, you got the more classic top mount, right? Just screws. Then you got what they call a silica gel particle. It's a fancy way of saying like silicone gaskets. Then you got the split o-ring, which is essentially like multiple gummy o-rings around the PCB instead of one giant one. Now we move on to the various different variations of some kind of spring mounting. First one is the non-load bearing spring. It's coil springs. Then the next one is the short arm spring, leaf springs. I'm not sure how they came up with some of these names, 
but you know, whatever, moving on. This one, they named it as is, the pogo pin, which is essentially a spring-loaded pin. So it's somewhat similar to the coil spring, but unlike the coil spring, you actually have much less contact area where the pins kind of touch the upper and the lower case. Finally, the most unique one, the magnetic levitation. Yes, you heard that right. Floating on top of magnets like a maglev train. Yes, that's a lot of different mounts. We will cover all that soon. But before we hop into the demos, let's cover a few more things, right? The modules. So the Zoom 65B3 comes standard with a little screen attached. It's about the size of a keycap and does like displays like basic info and image and stuff like that. However, you could swap that out for like many other things, like an extra key if you want to use that, which is useful, or the knob, which is also very functional. Or you can go for more like accents, right? Like the light up dots or like the light up telescope, which Mellatrix calls night lights. Finally, you can also opt for little magnetic badges that you could swap in and out pretty quickly. So total of six. I think I got all the variations now out of the way. Then let's move on to the stuff that you guys are actually interested in and probably why you're watching this video. The sound, feel, and how the mounting styles change anything. To keep things consistent, all the builds will be done with the palm plate, and I will stick with just one type of switch, which in this case is the linear Hanami Dango switches. And for keycaps, I'm using the Wuche Poker Double Shot PBT keycaps, which I think, in my opinion, looks fantastic. First of all, this has to be a big question always, right? You guys always ask me this. Foam versus no foam. So let's cover that first. For this demo, I'll be using the silica gel or silicone gasket, whatever you want to call it, since I felt this is probably the most common type of keyboard mounting these days. So the first one is all the foams, including the poron sound modification sheet. Let's go. Yes, as you'd expect, the foam build sounds foamy. Sounds good, but not as marbly as you'd expect from like a PE foam build. In my opinion, I actually like this much better. Rather than like the pour on foam like completely making it sound like marbles, it just helps to kind of amp up the mid and like the mid low tones up a bit. Now let's remove most of the foam except the plate foam and see how that goes. I usually leave the plate foams in for soft plate builds like this because switch insertion is such a pain without it. So let's check it out. As you'd expect, if you remove most of the foam, then you do open up the case sound a bit more. In addition, when you remove the pour on sound modifier sheet, the mid and the mid low tone focus kind of like goes away and the overall keyboard sounds a little bit higher pitched or clacky, right? But at the same time, it sounds cleaner in my opinion and a little bit more truer to what the keyboard's supposed to sound like. While we're on the topic of sound, how about we dive a bit deeper into how like the different mounts and like how they impact the overall sound. For this demo, I'm using the low foam setup with just the plate foam and everything else like the same, right? The, except the mounts. So before I even go into this, let me tell you, if you're expecting mind-blowingly different results, you're going to be disappointed. Honestly, most of these mounts, they sound very much alike like each other. Maybe with the exception of like two, but you know what, let's go.
that's a lot of different mounts. But honestly, when you go back to back to back, even when you go back to back to back, they all kind of sound pretty similar, doesn't it? I think the minor exception may be like the top mount and like the silica gel mount versus everything else. And I think it's because of the fact that those two are actually plate mounted while the rest are actually PCB mounted. I created a chart for you so you could easily see it more visually, right? In my opinion, the two plate mounted styles, so top mount and the silica gel, they're the loudest. It's not that loud, but they're still the loudest, while the rest are more of a quieter type. What I realized is that the less contact surface the mount has, like the magnet or the pogo mount, there was less noise being generated, which makes sense, right? If you watch some of my old videos, less structural sound. When it comes to the pitch though, most of the spring style mounts resulted in a higher pitch, while like the direct or the rubber mounts resulted in a lower pitch. But honestly, there's probably like a 10% variation at max between like the highest and the lowest, which means that like the different mounts doesn't change the sound profile of the Zoom 65 V3 that much. If that's the case, what about the feel? Surely the feel has to change a lot, right? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so what was interesting is that the Zoom 65 is a soft keyboard no matter what you do. However, there is an inherent difference to how that softness is actually felt. Here's a chart to show that. So as you can see here, what I noticed is that while every mount was flexible, some actually allowed for more maximum deflection than the others. The more direct or plate mounted styles like the top mount and like the silica gel actually yielded the least amount of flex as expected, while most of the spring mounts yielded more maximum flex or deflection. However, the biggest surprise here came from the leaf spring, which felt like you can really squish down on this one and it allowed for more movement, like maximum amount, which makes sense, right? It's probably because of the fact that the leaf spring, when it's pressed down, it could go the flattest. When it came to the bounciness, so like when you type, do you feel like the keys are moving up and down with your keystroke? The results were very different. Obviously, the more direct mounts, like once again, the top mount and like silica gel felt most stable. Meanwhile, something like the coil spring, pogo, and magnet mounts were very, very bouncy. If you like your keyboard moving around with your typing, those are probably the mounts for you. However, once again, the biggest surprise for me came from the leaf spring mount, where the stiffness of the leaf spring made the overall typing feel much more stable, right? Especially versus some of the other spring mounts, while having that tension to provide a, you know, a lively typing experience of a spring. In my opinion, the leaf spring mount was probably the most balanced mounting style for me. Overall, that summarizes the Zoom 65 V3 and its mounting styles. Honestly, I wouldn't say that the different mounts like turn the one keyboard into seven different ones. However, what I did appreciate was how you can truly custom tailor it to exactly how you like it, especially when it comes down to feel. In my opinion, given all the options, my favorite was actually pretty clear. I would do the plate and the pour on sheet and remove the lower case foam. For mounting wise, I would actually go with the leaf spring mount for like its perfect balance in my opinion, in feel and a clean prominent sound. In my opinion, this was the most balanced type of Zoom 65 V3 that I like to use. So let's take a listen.
I think that's the most balanced setup in my opinion, honestly. Now, everything is great and all, but obviously there are some quirks to this keyboard, right? Right. For starters, I'm going to say it. The Zoom 65 V3 has way too many options. Like variety is a spice of life, but when there's too much, you're probably gonna die without being able to try it all. Also, decision paralysis. I feel like some of the mounting styles were also very similar to each other that perhaps it could have been consolidated. Half the modules are also a very similar concept, which also could have been consolidated. Next, I do wish at this price point, the magnetic connectors were like not on a dongle. On something like an ND75, acceptable. But on this, it would just be much cleaner and easier to use in general like some of the Neo boards out there. Finally, I did hope that the Zoom 65 V3 would have a stronger sound signature when the Poron sheet was removed. After using some of the latest Neo series boards and how great those are without any foam included, I know it's possible even at this price point. The Zoom 65 V3 does have great sound, but I do feel that it needs that Poron sheet to really achieve it. But I don't know, that's just me. So given all this, what is my final thought? Well. The Zoom 65 has always been a great option for an entry into the more serious mechanical keyboard hobby. Honestly, at the starting price of $179 for the Zoom 65 V3, it's a very reasonable price for a keyboard that in my opinion, I feel is more encroaching into the mid-level, um, not so much entry. It does have mind-melting number of customization options and some of the random flaws I have experienced, but I think it allows you to find that perfect setting that you could truly call this keyboard yours. Given that, the third iteration of the Zoom 65 is a great option for those that are graduating from like the true entry boards and wanting to explore much deeper into the keyboard hobby. The ultimate question is, this or something from like QK? That is the dilemma now. And it's gonna, in my opinion, come more down to looks more than anything at this price point and at this point. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll have more content for you in the future. Thanks.